All right, guys, and uh, welcome to my channel. Right today, I want to be looking at this lithium eight phosphate battery from SOC. This is the 206 amp hour version at 12 volts. This battery, incidentally, is also available in more of an IP rated case, which is great for the marine industry. Now, SOC also have these different style of batteries and different voltages and capacities, so it's worth going to check out their other batteries that they have in stock. Now this battery, by the way, came and um, was delivered within two days, uh, Parcel Force delivered it, and um, so SOC have storage or what more of a warehouse delivery set up in the UK, uh, Germany, which is designed for the rest of Europe and America. So delivery was super quick and uh, very efficient. Now, I want to be doing a review on this, which I just said, and uh, I'm not the kind of guy just to flip the handle on the side and uh, connect it onto an inverter and say, yeah, seems pretty good. I want to really take the cover off for this battery. I want to take some voltage readings, I want to do some capacity tests, see if the bat cells inside are top balanced. So really have a good look at this battery to see if it's actually worth your cash. Now, this battery was bored to put inside a camper van, so, it's no odds to me how this review goes, but uh, what I've seen so far, it looks really positive. So without further ado, let's get into the review and have a closer look uh, of this battery. Now SOC batteries come with a 7 year warranty and 4 to 8,000 cycle lives. Now SOC are also saying that these bare batteries can be connected in series, so 24, 36 and 48 volt setups, which is pretty good because I've noticed some amount of battery manufacturers, their BMSs aren't able to deal with this. Now we get the standard high and low voltage disconnect and high temperature and low temperature while charging and that protects the battery, battery from lithium plating. Now we also have a discharge rating of 100 amps and a 50 amp charge rating. Now lithium ion phosphate batteries aren't actually that complicated to maintain and rebuild if they become faulty. Now, SOC is suggesting that their batteries are able to be maintained, which is brilliant because other manufacturers out there are keeping their lids well tightly sealed. And people like me are having to cut the tops off to get inside to check out the build quality. Now, in my hand here, we have a lithium ion phosphate uh, BMS which will be exactly pretty much the same one inside this battery. Now on my channel I play with these sort of batteries, I've built a few myself, bought the cells individually and built my own batteries. Now with that in mind and the ability to rebuild these batteries I think it's a brilliant selling point. If you want to know more about maintaining and building lithium ion phosphate batteries please check out the other videos on my channel. Now I just want to say very quickly I'll leave a link in the video description below to any of the products that I'm using in this video and that includes the SOC battery behind me. So you'll see there's two, one for the European included the UK as well under the European link and for the America. So you just need to click wherever you are in the world. Welcome to the bench guys. So let's have a look inside. So we've got a nice terminal connectors on top. We'll also come with these nice rubber covers. Now for all those out there who don't know much about lithium ion phosphate batteries, just let me take the opportunity to talk you through it. So this on top is our, what is our battery management system. And down here is our lithium ion phosphate cells. For a 12 volt, we always have four of these cells. Now these are, uh, when they're fully charged, are uh, rated at 3.6 volts which are quite, if you've done your maths there, it'll just be about over, just over 14 uh, volts. But normally their operating uh, voltage will be about 12.6 volts. Now here you can see our positive comes straight off the positive terminal uh, to our case terminal. Now we've got these wide in series, so plus to minus, plus to minus, plus to minus, plus to minus. And we can see our minus cables going up to our battery management system and then out to the other terminal. Now, here we've got our balancing uh, cable. Now this does two things. Now these, um, according to uh, SOC, all have also have the ability to uh, balance the cell. So if each any of these cells comes out of sync, what the BMS will do is just pull that cell or the one next to it in line and it will balance so each of these cells always has the same capacity. Now what these also do is, 
at a low voltage disconnect and high voltage disconnect is monitor each of the battery cells uh, to ensure that they stay within the safe parameters. So if they go over 3.6 volts the BMS will do a disconnect and at 2.5 volts again the battery BMS will then do a disconnect. Now this is extremely important when building lithium ion phosphate batteries to ensure the safety of the pack. Now the overall build quality I think is really good. This is actually a steel bar uh, going right across and there's no plastic in here. So what I'm going to do is just spin the camera around for you guys to just have a closer look. Here we are solar fans, I've got Darth Vader telling us the time, my DJI Osmo set up and me charger up and running. So I'm going to leave this overnight with this with my little, little studio light on so we can keep seeing what's going on. I'll be waiting for a red and a green light to illuminate on the charger. Once that comes on we know the, the SOC BMS has cut the power and doing some quick maths. We know the charger is a 10 amp output, we'll be able to work out the capacity of these cells. Well, capacity of these cells when they were shipped. Now that is assuming that these are the 206 amp hours as advertised, but we'll find that shortly when we do a capacity test to see if we are actually getting the full 206 amp hours that soccer cell allows. Right, we are solar fans. The battery behind me is now charged. So I've written down some numbers here, so it makes it easier for me. So it took 16 hours and 15 minutes to charge. So being a 10 amp charger that took 100 the battery swallowed 160 amp hours of juice so assuming this is a 206 amp hour battery which we'll find out very shortly and um, there was 46 amp hours remaining in them batteries so that works out around about 22 percent capacity in this battery when it was shipped now that's the industry standard now for batteries being travelled and transported, batteries must be between 20 to 30 percent. So the fact this battery was 22 percent was about right. So we don't want to see anything less than 20 percent and anything more than 30. So it was spot on. Right, guys. So let's drag you closer, and we'll have a look at the individual cell voltages in this battery. Now it's fully charged. Now the battery is disconnected. So just keep an eye on our multimeter there. So we've got 3.4. Three point five, three point five, and then three point five. So we're about point. This first one was point one of a volt out. So again, I've not oh, the charger. By the way, is still connected. By the way, so this is where it sat dormant. But when it was charging, this battery here did shoot up to its disconnect voltage, by the way. But I think seeing as the battery is no longer put, firing any juice in, the BMS has done the disconnect, the battery voltages have kind of settled down um, to kind of a stable kind of state of charge voltage. All right, guys, so I'm now upstairs in the office. Um, I've got my house thermostat here. Um, to, just to ensure that this room stays at an ambient temperature of 20 degrees. I've got my battery capacitor here set up and ready to go. So all I need to do is just press start. So what I'll do is I'll do the test and then I'm going to report back after it's finished just so we can see if this battery is the 206 amp hours as advertised. Well there we are guys, the test is complete. I got 208 amp hours from my tester which is 2 amp hours more than SOC are advertising. Which is brilliant because what we don't like is when manufacturers lie um, about their component specs which is not good. It's not good. And especially when people like me catch them out and when we do reviews and it uh, just highlights the fact there's companies out there trying to pull fast ones. So overall I really like this product. Um, the only negative I think I would like some rubber feet on the bottom um, because my workbench downstairs it's quite easily marked and uh, a product like this or if you're mounting and dropping it in anywhere um, it's nice to have that bit of um, soft touch when I'm dropping it down but overall that can be fixed but overall I think it's beautifully made and I think I'll be buying and purchasing more of these in the future um, for my builds that I do so that's it guys and uh, if you like this video <laughs> please give us a thumbs up it's appreciated helps this little channel grow and helps me fight those uh, YouTube algorithms.